This is a video on parametric level design with a focus on using the Corvex level design plugin from wallworm.com. This video is intended to demonstrate the benefits of using parametric design principles, though it will not demonstrate how to implement all techniques. You can download this scene from wallworm.com to explore some of the methods not demonstrated. What does it mean to be parametric? If you've made a single primitive in Max, like this box, you've created a parametric object. The box is controlled by a few basic parameters such as length, width, and height. This is a parametric object, but this is just the beginning of parametric design. As you can see here, you can drive the parameters of an object based off of the parameters of another object. In this case, if I change the height of one object, I'm controlling the width of the other object. This has many exciting implications for the designer. Understanding how to use these principles can help you efficiently control your scenes and to diminish the time it takes for editing and changing your scene. Let's use a practical example. Here we have a scene with a very basic blocky building and the mapper is building this level with certain specs and as he's gotten to this stage where he's already laid out a boundary and sky we find out that we need to add more floors to this building and or props that extend further up than the skybox allows for example let's say that we have to add a cylinder object to the scene and this cylinder has to go up 512 units based on the specs. At this point in time if you're not using a parametric principle you'll have to go and edit every single piece of the surrounding walls, edit their height, and edit the sky to go up higher. However, if you have set your scene up in a parametric fashion all we need to do is change one parameter. In this case it's going to be the height of these walls and automatically my ceiling is going up with it. And that's an example of parametric controls. The Corvex plugin itself is a parametric way of looking at level design and layout and it has two modes, blocks and walls. In this example here, this whole building all of the walls are composed of one Corvex object. Its parameters then dictate how the wall pieces are formed and made. In this example, we can see here if we change the height or the, excuse me, the width of this, let's choose this here, the width, we're going to see that all of the walls across the entire object are changing to match this parameter. This one parameter now controls the width of all walls across this building. And it makes it a lot easier for adjusting the scene as needed. Here's another view. As you can see, I can change the walls across the entire object with ease and set them to my needs it takes a lot less time to control your layout in this way especially if you have to make changes down the road and the depth at which you can add parametric controls is really only limited to your needs expertise and imagination I have just unhid some manipulators in the scene and these manipulators are driving certain aspects of this scene including the height of the walls and the width the thickness of each floor. If I turn on manipulators here I can then control these. If I change the floor height you can see all the floors are changing as well as where the floors are at, the height of each floor. You can change the width of each of these and then you can see the whole system updated to, to show this. 
I can also, let's see here, I have added some lights. to this system. And these lights, they're controlled by this spinner, which says that these are always going to be somewhere between the ceiling and floor of each level, wherever they're at. Down here. And this gives me a handy control at tweaking across the scene exactly where I want things, especially if you have large groups of items that have to have very similar parameters that control how they work and look. Now we're going to demonstrate another aspect of parametric design. This Corvex object that creates the outer walls here is composed of one object that one of its parameters is a list of splines and these splines control the shape and outline of the walls. Each of these three shapes are all actually referenced back and forth between each other. If I go back to this Corvex or this spline here and I start adding lines to it. I'm going to snap to grid here. You're going to see that it added to all three of those levels. Same here. Let's go and add this wall here. And the floor in here will follow the same principle. If I select it and choose its main floor and I want to add some new splines to it, I have now added a floor that flows all the way around and is controlled by a single spline. And I want to make sure this doesn't come across as all the parts of this have to always look the same with parametric design. I'm just showing you principles that can help things in the future. I'm going to just demonstrate really quickly and to make this uh, a little bit easier to view. I'm going to change the width to a value that will be easier for me to snap to the grid here and I'm going to change my grid size to match. And notice that these don't line up now, that's fine, I can fix those in a moment here. But this bottom wall here, we want to extend it out so it goes around in a way and isn't uh, repeated up and down. All we got to do is add a new spline. And if I need to move these parts around, I can do so. Make these line up, and there you go. This concludes the video on parametric level design and a brief demonstration of Corvex. You can download this scene from the website to explore some of the methods not explained in great detail in this video. Thank you, and have a good day.